Hello, hello, everybody. We have a special for you here today. This is called a turnaround. I might be the owner, which I am Robert J. Moore, right? I'm the CEO of Magnetic Entrepreneur. But today, I'm actually hosting the show today and actually going to be having on the podcast someone that actually does my podcast for me. So it's kind of a turnaround today. It's kind of nice to be turned around. Please help me welcome Della. Hello, everybody. Hi, Robert. Thank you. This is such a treat, right? This is it, it's different. It's different to actually have you um, being the guest on the show that you actually do. Yeah, but it's awesome. It's a great. You album. also do Della's voice too. I want to get that straight. You also do Della's voice. I sponsor that, um, and and you're doing Magnetic Entrepreneur uh, podcast for me too. Yes, and both are giving me a lot of pleasure because they're my it's my passion to to run these podcasts. So I'm doing I'm actually having fun. Doesn't um, it doesn't feel like work? It's just fun, fun, and it's it's wonderful. So thank now, when you. I, when I first seen you, I mean, uh, it was weeks ago. I was a couple months ago actually. Now, uh, I Back actually talked, I, yeah yeah mm. was, I, I talked to you and it's like and. The thing is, I talked to you about being on your show, and you said, oh, my God, yes, right? And I'm like, okay, no problem, cool, All right? Um, how were you feeling when I actually asked you to be on, when I asked to be on the, your show? Because you had you had a good expression on you. I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, so correction, you didn't ask to be on my show. I, I invited you on my show. Okay, let's get that straight. So <laughs> this is <laughs> So this is what happened was, you um i had i had uh followed you on facebook and you had sent out a message on on facebook uh introdu introducing yourself and you sent me your youtube channel link and then i sent you mine and you said you're like oh cool um I, why aren't you monetizing this i said because i only have 70 subscribers and <laughs> you said oh i have 45,000 subscribers. I'm like, thanks for rubbing that in. Who is this guy? <laughs> and then uh, I said, that's cool. Ha, um, can I interview you on Della's voice? And you actually took a little bit of time. So here I'm thinking, oh, he's just going to go and, uh, you know, do a little research. And he's going to be like, no, like, why would I want to waste my time on Della's voice? But you didn't. You came back with a big yes. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. So um, that's how it happened. Yes. In that time, though, did you do your due diligence to see who I was? Yes, of course. Yeah, I was I was uh, looking you up. And then I went to uh, your YouTube channel. I looked up your story. You had a really compelling story. And it was very inspiring. And I was like, wow, this is like, this is a cool guy. Um, this is this is a good story. So yeah, the reason why I mentioned that is because you draw a lot of stories out of people when you do your one or the other, when you do Magnetic Entrepreneur or when you do Della's Voice. You like to how, allow people to tell their story, but you also have a way of drawing it out from what I hear. Um, so I think what I've learned is that people like to talk about themselves. Like people, people have stories. Every single person has a story. Uh, it's not just about their business. It's not just about how they make money, but it's about how, that's really cool actually. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> how you change the angle of the camera. That's really professional. I don't do this, by the way. <laughs> um, I don't have his setup, okay? <laughs> so I, I feel like when you, um, when you allow people to tell their story, their personal story, you get to meet the real person. Uh, it's um, where they started from, what got them started, what really um, triggered them, what what they had to go through to get here to this point of their life. People l don't mind sharing stuff like that. And that's the, that's the cool stuff. That's the stuff that inspires people and keeps them uh, engaged. And they want to listen. Like they just want to listen to more and more of the story. It's the personal story. But how's it be to be on the other end though? Like right now, you yeah. mean? It's all right. You're allowing me to tell my story, which is cool. I right. like it too. I, I it's like time, it. It's time to let your story get out there. Let's, <laughs> let's, hear, let's hear what you have to share. Let's hear what got you to where you are today. 
what kind of struggles and tribulations did you have to go through in order to be here today? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I was born in Iran, a little Middle Eastern country with good reputation. I don't know if you know it uh, right now. <laughs> I, um, I was there till I was 13. Um, I grew up in an alcoholic home. Uh, my dad was uh, the alcoholic. He was a teacher, wonderful, wonderful man, like he, a real human. Um, he had so many friends. People loved him. So I, I got that part of my dad, right? Which, which you understand, like now I'm thinking back, I'm like, I got so much from him that it doesn't bother me that um, he was also um, alcoholic. So then anyways, 13, when I was 13, uh, Iran was in the, in the middle of a war. Uh, with Iraq, things are bad. Um, my mom decided that it's time to leave Iran for good. So she picked up me and my little brother, who's six years old, uh, younger than me, with two suitcases. And she started on this journey to go to France, where my aunt lived. Um, so she um, had agreed to put us up for a little bit. So we went there. We went to France. We knew we weren't ever going to go back to Iran. So we went to France and we, we thought we were, we were going to live there. Only France wasn't the place for us. We couldn't really stay there. Mom couldn't get a good job. She was also a teacher in Iran. So she couldn't get a good job. You know, she was doing all sorts of stuff to, to keep a roof over our head, like cleaning hotels and cleaning theaters and just things that she would have never thought she would be doing. So then after two and a half years, she decided that, nope, we're going to keep going. We're going to go to another place. And we started on this trip to come to Canada. Only we couldn't get a visa to Canada because we didn't have um, f proper documentations. So what we did was... Um, what well, what she did was she hired a, a smuggler um, who lived in Spain and um, he agreed to, to get $10,000. This is like going back 30 years now, $10,000 to get us across the border and uh, bring into Canada. And so we did. We, we started off on this adventure again with two suitcases, took the train over to Madrid. When, where we met this guy and um, he took us to this like little, um, I guess like a hostel, uh, you know, where we could stay for a few days until our papers were in order. So he came into the room with these passports. So the, they were French passports. Um, for some poor woman who thought that she lost her passport, that was her passport. And so he, back then it wasn't, um, advanced like this they were like the laminated pages so he like he took a blow dryer he removed the laminate and then he changed the picture of the French woman with my mom's picture and then he put it back on <laughs> and then the, so the, in this passport there was also a picture of a little boy who would have been the woman's son only the, the 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 little boy in that picture was like six years old and my brother was 10 but he didn't bother changing the picture of the little boys like ah nobody will care like okay and then they gave me the passport of a 20 something year old now here's like i'm 16 so like french girl and so we're, we were supposed to pretend that we were French. So we had to like change my look to make me look older, color my hair, do all this stuff to make me look um, like a French girl. And at that point, my brother and I were fluent in French. So that was no problem. We could speak French like French people. So they said now, the smuggler said, um, the immigration officers in the madrid at the madrid airport they're very vigilant this is like back in um the late 80s when there were a lot of refugees coming through so he said you can't go that route we got to change your route so he, he decided we were gonna um fly out of portugal lisbon so now we have to take the train from madrid to go to lisbon um like we didn't know anyone there. My mom, like I, Robert, I think back at my mom, honestly, at the age of like 40, 41, what courageous woman she was like to, to do all of this with two kids. Uh, like, like, 
this is like, wow. I mean, this is a side that nobody's ever heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here we are. This, this where you get your ballsy from, your mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. So here we are in, in Lisbon. Um, and we were, we were to wait there for like two to three days until our flight's up. So again, like we're, we're, we don't know what to expect. Like we've never been to Canada. We don't speak English. Like we've, we don't have any money. We don't like, we have no money. Every money, we, all the money we had, we had to give to this guy. And the remainder is like to get us there, right. To the destination. So, um, we get on a, so, so here we are the day of the flight and we go to the airport. And one thing I knew was, okay, only speak French and make sure my brother's faced towards me. So he's not looking at the immigration officer, just in case he checks his picture with the picture that's in the passport. So anyways, we get through the gates, no problem. We get on the plane and the plane is not moving. Like it's just sitting there for like. Oh, making you nervous. Oh my gosh. I just remember my mom. She was like, oh my God, they know. Like they know. They're going to any minute now. That's why you were busted, eh? Yeah. Like honestly, she's like, they're going to come and they're going to get us. Well, here she is like, you know, this woman and she knows she, she's traveling with a fake passport. She's trying to enter into a country illegally. Like she was, she would be in big trouble. So um, anyways, we finally, the plane takes off and they had instructed that we should rip off the passports in mid, midair so that when you land in a country where you're supposed to seek asylum they don't have anything to send you back to where you come from so they don't know where you're coming from so technically we lied right so um i go into the bathroom stall and oh by the way disclosure okay i don't know if the stature of limitation has run out on this thing this was 30 years ago okay let's get that straight i've been a citizen <laughs> don't try and do anything like that I'm oh you, you, my dear. don't be sitting there giving people ways of doing things <laughs> um and it wouldn't be ten thousand now either oh Apologies. my gosh it, i don't think it can happen anymore i mean i don't know robert i have a deep appreciation for people who risk their lives to, to try and get across the border into any country because they, you know, they're, they're going there because they, they want a better life for themselves. For some of them, it's a matter of life and death. But anyways, that's a different story. So we get to Canada. Oh, so I'd, I'd rip up the passport in midair in the little bathroom. And then we get to Canada. Here we are in Montreal at the, at the um, airport and we're just going th towards the gates towards the immigration officer mm -hmm. and of course like it's all um, you know autom automated not automated I mean autom automated. <laughs> automatic like he goes the guy goes passports and my mom says no passports and the guy looks up at my mom am I boring you Robert no <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Work a, lot. Way, Work a lot. of hours. By the way, this would not happen when I do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're not boring me at all. No, it's not, you're very intriguing. So, so, anyways, um, the officer says again, like he's he's looking up at my mom, like I'm not amused. Passports. My mom says no passports, and the guy goes. Now he gets, he's getting like frustrated. He's like, no passports, no Canada. <laughs> and at that point, my mom just lost it. So she started crying. She's like, we're tired. We don't have passports. We are refugees. And then I'm crying. And my mom's like, don't worry. Um, nothing's gonna happen because like she knew like she knew like they're not gonna turn us back where are they gonna send us like there's no way they're gonna send us where are they gonna send us so anyways they let us in and then it was just a matter of waiting in the hall to get um, paperwork and all of that 
And then that was it. That was the start of my journey in Canada. And I never looked back. If you had no money, though, where'd you guys go? So um, luckily, we had friends like from way before that lived in Toronto. And so we knew where they lived and they had welcomed us into their home. But we knew like it was just a short thing. Right. So we we needed to go there for a few days. But here's the thing the system is really well set up for newcomers because um it doesn't take long before the government starts their support and of course like you know there's a lot of people who take advantage but you know mom started working like right away like she got a job at the dry cleaners we so so what we did was there was a place downtown toronto um it was set up inside an old church. It was called Sojourn House. And that was the place where newcomers went for a few days. They could stay there as long as they wanted. So there were like beds and stuff. There weren't private, there weren't private rooms or anything. It was like a big hall with like beds. Um, and so we stayed there for a few days. And then we got this. Our first place ever was on the Danforth. It's like this like dingy basement bachelor. It was like sh like low ceiling and it was like ugly wallpapers and we got a bunk bed and then I couldn't even sit up in the bunk bed because my head would. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's funny. You know, it yeah, was, and it worked. And that was that was our first place in Canada. We were so proud that you know, within like two weeks of arriving, we, we had that place to our own. And I started going to high school. I was back then. I was, was in Toronto. You stayed in and raised in. Uh, so I was 16 when I got to Canada. So I was in. Yeah. So I lived in Toronto and then. Okay. Yeah. So moved after. But yeah, so that was the start. Then I started high school, like ESL and which, you know, you know, like you. Honestly, I, I I think now at how did I sit in class? ESL is fine. Like ESL is good. It's easy, right? But then in biology and chemistry and physics and like all these things were in English. How did I get it? Like how did I do Hamlet? I have no idea how I did all of that, but I did. And then was, um, was the English start a single learner? I I, I was at the learn. Um, because I already knew French, the writing part of it was easier for me. Because, okay, if you know anything about Iranian language, um, the alphabet is even different, right? We, I mean, it's a totally different alphabet, uh, and we write from right to left. Um, so, like, I mean, Latin is totally different. For me, I, I went through a really tough um, journey in France when I was learning French. Um, but when I came to Canada, I think my background in a different language helped me. So it wasn't long, like a year after I was here, I was, you know, I was, I had no problem. It wasn't like, I was not fluent, but I had no problem. So I went, you know, and then I went to university and stuff and then, yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. That is, I mean, the journey that you expressed could have had you guys banned from Canada from life if you would have got caught, right? And you'd never be here. Um, your mom being ballsy, I guess you can call it, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And, and, and wanting to save the life for you guys to have a better life. That is pretty remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, hence, I do the same thing for my kids. I mean, because I mean, you always want better for your kids, no matter what, right? So I mean, simply put, I mean, what are you going to do for your kids? So, I mean, I struggle 18 hours a day. I mean, I work 140 hours a week, so I don't work 40 hours. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to work for someone else. So, I mean, I work for myself and, and then uh, bring people like yourself that, I mean, have a beautiful story. I didn't know that about your story. That, that's amazing. That's, that's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty so cool. you, so what is it after you done high school? What did you do? So I went to University of Toronto and I took sciences because every Iranian parent wants their kid to be a doctor. <laughs> it's so true though, too. It's true though, isn't it? 
It's so true. Um, but I didn't. I had way too much fun. Uh, I didn't study. I didn't attend classes. So basically, I think I um, just, I, I, you know, I just went through university and I finished. Like, I finished. I got my bachelor's degree. But it wasn't anything that um, called me. You know, there was, I was not attached to anything. So then I started working in retail. Um, I was working through, in retail all through high school and, and university. And um, I've, you know, back then you don't really think about stuff like this, but what I was learning was um, communication skills, people skills. Um, I, I learned how to talk to different people, how to relate to different people. So it was all part of getting me ready, I guess. Uh, but I spent a lot of years in retail. I was working for the same company for a very long time. They're actually really good friends of mine. They're the godparents to my son. So that's, nice. yeah, so, so that loyalty um, for sure was there. So, um, and then when I was 30, my son was born and then I decided that I needed to start something for me. Um, I, I always had an entrepreneurial um uh, mindset even I remember back in like when I was like in my early 20s someone approached me and talked to me about Amway do you remember Amway yeah I remember I remember <laughs> yeah, Amway yeah yeah so Amway was uh, really neat because even though I didn't make any money doing Amway or anything like that my husband was so resistant like he's like I can't believe you're pulling me into this what I learned from that whole experience was that um, I had never been exposed to motivational speaking, um, to people inspiring each other. I was never exposed to that before then. When I started going to all these like big arenas with thousands and thousands of people, you know, with that speaker up on the stage, I got to witness how one person's words could shake up an entire audience. And that to me was magnetic. Like I thought to myself, never mind what money Amway can make you potentially. Like I want to be that person up there on that stage given people hope did that, you ever become that person well um no not yet not yet i should say not yet because and, well, i wouldn't say not yet i wouldn't say not yet you are individually in your own way all right let's just back this up because i want you to see where you came from and where you're at now you're sitting there saying not yet but you're visualizing yourself on a stage doing it yes well, simply put, it's the same thing as doing a podcast, All right? You're doing it like right now as we speak, you're doing it, All right? Not even in this, not even in this, not even in this interview that we're talking about, but before that, when you started last year at Dallas Voice, you started it. You started becoming what you wanted to be. Yes, you're right. You you're know? right. But at the same time, you have another job that you actually do. Um, that you started with your husband. Yes. So we have, so I, so now when I was 30, my son was born, then I decided I needed my own business. Thank you for taking me back there. <laughs> You're doing a good job, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. I don't want to get fired. <laughs> so uh, we're like, okay, so we're sitting around with, um, um, my husband's sister and her husband and we're like what kind of a business can we start and someone said what about a flower shop I'm like hmm, okay and that was it like I got that idea and I kid you not like I was on it so fast that everybody could like everybody around me was like amazed so we decided in November and in February on February 7th we opened the flower shop so and I had no idea the difference between a rose and a carnation that's how bad I was at this I hope you and, do now <laughs> you kidding <laughs> now I'm an expert so then I started the you know okay what can I do first what can I do first let me see like what is the first step I can take of course I have to buy a fridge so that's where it started and it's funny how 
things happen, like pieces of the puzzle. Like I met the guy with the fridge who introduced me to this course I could take in and learn stuff in three weeks. He became my mentor and, and it was just an amazing journey. Were you struggling though at that point? Struggling. You had to take courses. I mean, you had to step aside from work and making money and and you put money out. Sure. I mean, uh, you know, um, I've, I've never, I've never been like, I've never had a lot of money in the bank. Never. Um, I will, but n- I've never, uh, and, but I've never worried. Like I've never been the type of person who said, Oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, cause I've because always, that's the hardest part for a lot of people, even myself, when I first started, it was, I had to leave my job when I was ready to leave my job and say, okay, I'm going to do this entrepreneur journey. Now there's no money coming in anywhere else. It's just me now mm-hmm. and what I had to do. And I, I mean, I had to also, I had to grind, I had to do what I ever do. No lies, no steal, no nothing like that. No, no, you know, Ponzi scams or whatever. Um, as you, as you, most some would say, right? But I mean, simply put, if you're looking at the situation, it's pretty scary when you're in that field and you're being coached by the people, but you're still got that resistance. Um, I, so I, when I started doing the flower business, someone I met, um, I met this woman at a, she was doing flowers at the, of a wedding I was attending and I talked to her and I said, Oh, I'm, I'm going to open my own flower shop. She's like, do you love it? Because if you don't love it, it's going to be really tough. I'll tell you one thing. You're not going to become a millionaire doing flowers. And I, I remember back then I was thinking, well, um, yeah, like I love it. I still love it, Robert. 17 years later, I still love doing flowers. I do. I work a lot. You know that. You you know. Um, I, I call you half of the time at the shop. Yeah. <laughs> so it takes, I do a lot of stuff from the flower shop actually. But um, it, it's been a blessing because it has allowed me to do all these other things. Um, you know, like Della's voice. And um, I started. The thing is, at the same time, though, you have a supporting uh, husband that you know says, "Okay, I support you in whatever you choose to do." But if you didn't have that, like me at first, I didn't have nobody at first. Mm-hmm. It was just me, so mm-hmm. I had to leave the one side. The money was not there no more, mm-hmm. and I had to go in. So that's why I'm saying that a lot of people find the struggle part of it. If you didn't have that supporting person beside you, it might have been a little bit different. I'm sure I'm not one for one second. Do I take that for granted? I don't think that it would be possible without the support of the people who really support you, like either emotionally or, um, you know, financially. Um, I don't think that's possible, but it takes a little bit of um, persistence from, yeah. from the individual. Because if I, I remember one time, and this is a while ago, I asked my husband, I said, um, I, I was, it was something I was doing. I said, I want you to believe in me. And he said, that's not, that doesn't really matter. Della. I said, he, he said, do you believe in yourself? See what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, so if you, you can have all the support around you, but if you're the kind of person who gets tired easily and gives up, then you're not going to make it no matter what the support is. Right. So I think having, having the support is wonderful. But I mean, like yourself, look at what you've done even without the support, right? So mm-hmm. now the thing is, I mean, you, you might have the support. I mean, it doesn't matter if I had the support or not. The point is you're you're looking at going on a new journey. You're doing the flower shop, you're being successful and things were going well, 17 years. Now, last year you come up with this concept of doing Della's voice. Tell, tell me a bit about that. So I went through a, through a bit of a journey about three years ago. Um, I was, um, so, so I have a brother, my only brother, he's, um, he's, uh, living with schizophrenia and for a very long time, I took that for granted. I didn't know anything about that journey. I didn't understand it, nor did I want to understand it. I always just looked at him and I thought he was just being a jerk. I didn't get it. So about three years ago, he came back into my life. And this time I really decided to try and see what is going on to see if I, at first it was like, let me help you. 
while I was looking for help for him, I found out that I needed to help myself first. And that was a big eye opener for me because I thought I was perfect. Um, so <laughs> I started looking at all these like different programs, you know, there's lots of programs out there. If you want to change your life, you can change your life. I mean, I started um, on, on this journey at Al-Anon. I don't know if people are familiar with Al-Anon. Al-Anon is a, is a gem. Like it's a, it's a hidden treasure to me. Can you, can you let people know what Al-Anon is? Sure. Al-Anon is a program. It's, a, it's based on a spiritual um, program um, that helps families and friends of alcoholics. So it's not for the alcoholic, it's for the caregiver. Yeah, so the AA part of it's for the alcoholics, yes. which I went to because I was an alcoholic for years. Yes. So that's how I could relate so much to your story on that app. Yes. So, so the Al-Anon uh, program uh, is really for the caregiver. It's really because um, they believe that alcoholism is a disease, but it's a family disease and everyone around it is suffering with symptoms and so they can carry these sim symptoms through their lives and it can uh, prevent them from from growing from living with joy so um so let me just let me just add on to that if you don't mind no because i was a counselor for 13 years right a, a registered counselor a registered therapist um, when you're looking at alanon alanon is, is is something that enhances uh, enhance the fact that the uh, Essentially, I'll tell you right now, it's, it's because of behaviors in the family, all right? Due to alcohol, you may not be drinking. It's a support system for all the other people in the system, in the family. Like, so if I'm drinking today, it'd be great support for my wife and my kids. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they're teens. doesn't matter. I mean, they have the one for teens. They have one for adults, but they can all join the same one. So it's a support system to help them, to let them know they're not in the wrong. They're not the ones. I mean, although the, the alcoholic keeps them hostage, right? They're not in the wrong. It's not their fault. It's a matter of teaching them how to stand up for themselves again and tell the person, I'm not wrong. I'm not in fault. Um, I'm me. I'm okay. You know, so it allows people to see the difference. So I apologize. Go ahead. No, please. That's, it's awesome. So um, I, I stumbled actually through the doors of Al-Anon um, because I reached out, because I, I asked for help. Um, and, um, someone suggested I go to al -Anon. I had no clue what al was going to do for me. I thought they were going to miraculously heal my brother. That's what I thought. So I walk in there and actually it's funny cause I, I wasn't a spiritual person. Uh, I didn't have a God. Um, so my friend said to me, Della, you have to keep an open mind when you walk through the doors of al -Anon. They're going to talk about God a lot. So I was like, oh my God. Okay, fine. Then I find out it's at a church. I'm like, oh no, they're gonna even, even double whammy. Me. Double whammy. <laughs> I've been there, seen that. You know what? But when you look at it, you just break it down. Good early direction. That's exactly it, right? Yes. So, but I mean, I I went there. My first day was October 15, 2017, Robert, and I've never looked back. My my Very life nice. started to change. I found joy again. I've changed my relationships. I've changed my work relationships. I've changed myself. I've that that just started me off on this journey, and then everything else just happened because I also found my spirituality, and now I didn't feel alone anymore. You know what I mean? That's that was just it was just so many good things that happened as a result. But then I started taking programs also like self-development programs. I started listening to podcasts, just bettering myself. I was like a sponge, right? I was just ready. Um, and then uh, what happened was I started a vlog called Della's Voice and it was just little short videos on how I was struggling and how was how what what stuff I was discovering about myself. It was just short videos and I was telling like very honest. And so that's how Della's voice started. And I wanted Della's voice to be a brand for um, wellness and recovery. Um, and my tagline was to spark your soul. And so I kept that dream alive um, through the 
past three years until October of, not funny how October is such a big month for me. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> October of last year. Oh my gosh. October 15 of last year was my very first episode of Della's Voice. And I've been doing them consistently. I have not missed any weeks. I've done them, whether it be live uh, in person when we could. And then I started this Zoom one, which just has taken it to a whole different level because now I'm able to interview people from across the world. That's right. And so it still remains. Della's voice is for recovery and wellness. Um, it's about bringing positivity. It's about informing, inspiring, and motivating people to live better lives. That's still not your end dream, though. What is your end dream? Well, I, I mean, I love... Okay, so I'm going to tell you. Um, <laughs> That's only part of it you're talking. Right? Um, so I want, I want to have my own talk show, like an actual talk show where um, I can reach millions of people. That's what I want. And I want to write books and I, I want to be a speaker on that big stage. My, my, um, okay, this is, I, I see this and I'm going to share this with you. Okay. I see this Please do. clearly. I can tell you exactly how it plays out. Okay. I've, I've seen this vision many, many times. Maybe one day I'll look back and say, I can't believe this. Um, <laughs> I'm on a private plane going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. There, I'm, I'm sitting there, the sun's shining through the little window. I'm in this plush chair. There's a little table in front of me and I know exactly what I'm wearing. I know the color of my pants. I know the feel of the fabric. I know what shoes I'm wearing. I, and I see the Burberry shawl around my, my shoulder. I see all of this. And then the plane lands and I get out of the plane and I walk into this limousine and it's taking me to this stage and it's in Chicago. And I go through the back Why door. Chicago? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because it's the home of Oprah Winfrey. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, then I go through the back door. I'm at the bottom of the stage, of the steps that lead to the stage. And um, I can feel the warmth of the lights on my skin. And I can feel the vibration of the, the audience. Like, even though I don't see them, I can feel them. And I'm, in, I'm, I'm standing there with anticipation. So that's how far that dream has built so far. So there. That's, that's, you know, it can happen. It's very simple. That can happen. I, I, I honestly can see that happening. Thank you. It may, not be, it may not happen in Chicago. It may not happen in, uh, you know, different ways of you're saying it. But a good, a good way of portion of that. Getting up on stage is not, it's not something it's hard to do. That's, uh, you got you got you got two coaches that are world speakers, so yes, yes, <laughs> it's yes, very yes, simple yes. to get up on the stage. You never know when we call that certain person up and say, "Hey, listen, come up for a minute," and introduce you. And once you're there, it's like, "What do I do now?" Well, you know, you know, I, I got to be honest with you. Um, for a long time, that end goal um, was very tiring because it's like, oh, did you know the if that's that's it if you constantly think about the end goal life can get really tiring mm -hmm. um but because i'm having fun in the process because i'm doing stuff i love doing and i'm li it's like i'm living my passion so it doesn't matter you know uh when or where or how like it really doesn't matter right because as long as i'm right now i'm having fun look i'm sitting across from one of the most successful people and we're having a friendly conversation i mean six months ago heck four months ago <laughs> i i didn't have such a such a person in my life i didn't have this opportunity so no i i'm i'm totally totally grateful for 
every single step of this journey. I came from Iran. Look at me. You know, you know, like you've come a long ways and I'm very, very proud of you. Thank you. For holding on to the things you do. Um, I see sometimes when you get on there, you got the odd person. I mean, one of the shows, you got the odd person that just doesn't put enough words out there for when you're interviewing them. It's like, what do I do now? Like, how do I draw this stuff out when they're not speaking? <laughs> and I've seen you struggle like that, but I mean, you do really well. Thank you. You do really well. I mean, you, you know how to change it around to get them thinking again. Because some people, they get on a, a video like this, they just stop. They just stop. They'll just give you short answers and that is it. It's like, we got an hour to go, man. We're going to yes. go like this an hour. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, know I mean? you know you're in trouble when you're constantly checking the clock. <laughs> yeah, and it's only 10 minutes in. <laughs> so, I mean, you do really well at pulling the different stuff out of them and asking the right questions in order for them to be engaged again. I mean, I, I'm impressed, you know. Thank you. And that's why I said I, I would love to do the uh, Magnetic Entrepreneur, and that's why I, I say straight up forward, I, I, I endorse your program. Thank you. I really appreciate you know, as, it. As one of your coaches, too, as one of your coaches that, I mean, you're starting a new program, a 60-day program, that's bringing you to a whole new level. I'm very you know, excited. So, I mean, yeah, we're, we're the work it. is going to begin. I mean, the work's going to begin. And, and, and as I, anybody that works with me, um, I care about your business more than your emotions. Emotions we can deal with later, right? Because the, the business is structured in a certain way. Everybody knows that if you if you put your emotions in there and you start running on your emotions, it'll destroy your intelligence all the way. Because what happens is we, we feel success and we let the emotions get in the way of that complacency. Once you have complacency, it's like, I don't need the coach tomorrow, man. I'm doing really well. I got this magazine. Yeah. I got this person. I got that person. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, well, you have nobody. You're finished with all four of those things that you're supposed to do. Now what? Yeah. Do you go back to that coach and say, well, look, I got to humble myself and say, I'm here? Or do you rather just stay with the coach and just keep going because they're going to guide you through those emotions and there's a lot of stuff that could happen. I would rather someone stay with me until they hit my level and then I introduce them to someone that's higher than me that can actually take them to the next level because I'm happy where I'm at and I like bringing people where I'm at, right? So when they come to where I'm at, then I bring them on. I want them to pass me, I do. But so you're always growing too, Robert. Like you, yeah. you and I, I see you are always, always like on different um, podcasts. Like the other day, you were on Tony Robbins. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. Stage. I mean, two hundred and two hundred and thirty-three right? thousand like people. This is like two thirty in the morning, and you're doing something cool like that. It's like if you know, even at your level, you're still growing. You're still stretching yourself. You're still, you, you know. Well, the old cliche I is: I mean, if you're the smartest in the room, get out of that room and start learning in a different room. Yeah. No, I like I like to continuously. I don't talk talk to stuff like this. I don't just sit there and coach people. I walk the walk, right? If I'm telling, if I'm I'm not going to tell you or suggest to you to do something that I'm not going to do myself. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to suggest that you know, you know do certain things to get to the level, well, I've got three coaches on my own that I'm doing things in order to grow too. If I just stay stagnant, that's not going to be a really good deal for you guys. It's not really good. Yeah, I've been on some high-end, high-end coaching calls where people pay like ten thousand dollars, and it was just a, a sign from God to tell me because I went there to speak, and this person told me, "No, no, Robert, these are really high-end people." You know, blah blah blah. The questions they were asking me were not high-end. It made me feel like not to be degradable. It made me feel like I've outgrown them, mm. and I'm actually higher than I thought that I'm actually growing more than I thought yeah. that God's given me that sign that, you know, that something more is going to open for you. Yes. And, and, and that's when we started, I started talking to Lori and we started putting this program together and she actually went through the exact same thing, but they were $25,000 tickets. They were, she was going through. Right. And then at the point, I mean, it just felt like we were both growing. Like we outgrew what the conversation was going on. And that, that was the first time that's ever happened to me. And you're going to feel the same way too. I mean, I think you already have felt that way with different things that certain people you talk to. It's like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm already above that. Right. And it's going to happen over and over. It's just a, I call it a coincidence. God keeping anonymous. You know, I like that. I like that phrase because I can't explain it any other way. <laughs> I like right? it. No, it, it's great. And you're, you're so right. And, and I've noticed that too. 
as I as I'm growing, uh, I, I'm I'm losing some of my entourage like that have been with me for a long time. Like I I'm losing them. It's like they're losing interest in me because I no longer. Because um, they don't want to. They're not willing to grow with you. That's why. Yeah, I think so. And because maybe they, I'm not. Re they don't relate to me anymore. So and that's okay. It's gotta be okay. Someone said. Um, to be a successful entrepreneur, sometimes you're going to feel really um, uh, lonely. <laughs> so um, I, that that's okay. That's okay with me. But uh, honestly, um, my 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 faith is stronger than my my fear. So um, that it keeps me going. Well, you know what fear stands for, right? Uh, yes, someone said that. I actually have it right here, so I'm going to cheat, but you say it. No, I want to hear your version. I like that. Okay, so hang on. I got it. That, way, that oh, way I can tell you my version, too. Okay, here it is. Um, false evidence appearing real. That's one way, yeah. What else? Okay, well, you look at fear. All right, now there's, a, there's two ways of looking at it. Um, you got to remember when fear comes in the brain, me with a psychology, I got a psychology major and, and BA and MA. Um, you want to look at the situation as fear is actually your frontal cortex. It, it's where it, it goes in your fight or flight. So you're looking at fear as an F everything and run, right? Or face everything and recover. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if you're facing everything and, re facing everything and recovering, those emotions that you actually had to face before, um, allows you to reiterate with them and put a new meaning towards them. So basically what you're doing is stripping your own emotions of the negative ones. And see, when, when negative comes my way, I look at it as an opportunity of growth because I want to find out why I'm feeling negative. So I look at the gut root of it and I sit there and say, okay, well, why am I feeling that way? Why is this person bugging me? All right? So then I say, okay, well, I was negative about this situation because I don't know why, because it just because I put a negative thought towards that. So I change it, I put a positive over it and try and try and grow with that again and then allow it to grow. It's like a seed, man. I mean, you put a seed down, it's how long is that gonna grow? It's gonna, it takes a long time. Yeah, it's gonna take a long time. My yeah. overnight success, like I told you before, my overnight success took 15 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Your I, dream, I, your dream has been taking you, okay, you're looking at 17 years that you've been in the business of the flower shop. That was a dream of yours to put together. That was a vision. All right. Now you have another vision to keep that, but at the same time, move forward with that. Right? Move forward and hang on to that while you're working hard to build your other dream to 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 keep going forward. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It is it is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I think sometimes we get uh impatient because maybe, you know, like I, I have done that. And I still do sometimes. I'll look at somebody and um, I'll compare myself to that person and say, ah, never oh, do this. that. I know, right? And I, I, I'll say something like, "Oh, this person. Well, they like they, they were so young when they started, you know. Uh, yeah, it took them this long, but they were so young when they started. Like I'm already 48 years old. Um, <laughs> oh my, you're only 28 days older than me. Don't tell anyone, <laughs> right? I'm like. It's, oh my gosh, if it takes me like 15 years or whatever, I'll be like over 60 years old before I can, I can get there. But it's okay. It may, may not. It may not take that long. But they say you, you underestimate your achievements. No, you overestimate your achievements in one year and you underestimate your achievements in five years. I do it this way. Don't give up 10 minutes before the miracle happens. When's that 10 minutes going to happen? Just you don't never give up. Know. Oh, that's good. Just don't yes. give up. Yes. Yeah. You know I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Some, some good advice, right? If you have a passion, if you have that passion, you want to be delivering it. Um, I tell people the 18 inch rule, the 18 inch rule is from your head to your heart. If you put that emotion behind it, right? That's only 18 inches. That's not very far. The dreams always come with emotion, right? It depends what emotion you have. If you have the negative towards it, you have to try and fix that. It's obviously not a dream. It's not, not something you're passionate about. But if it's something you're passionate and passionate about, if you want to do coaching, you want to do TV series and that, you can do it. It's not going to be that hard. It's going to be the coaching sessions that's going to bring you through it. There's going to be hard times going through it, 
because there's going to be something in life that's going to try and make it turbulence, right? So when you got that turbulence going on like a plane, is how are you going to make it through that? Are you going to walk through it? Are you going to trudge through it? Are you going to sit there and say, okay, well, this is going on in my life. I don't want to feel that anymore. I should just back up, mm -hmm. right? You've got to remember on the other side, it gets a little sweeter. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's growth. It's all part of growth, man. When you're, when you're struggling and you, you got your system there that don't work so right, all of a sudden you got, you know, like, I was supposed to be on five minutes ago. It's okay. Because God has what, made it the way it is for a reason. Oh, you're so right. Yeah. I, that, yeah. I, I wouldn't, if it weren't for all these years of going through what I went through, um, I wouldn't be here. It took it took all those experiences to make me grow into the person I am today. It got me ready to be ready. So I'm okay. I'm, I'm ready to be ready. Well, you know, you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Um, I want to end this uh, with you saying some beautiful words right now. I want you to sit there and knock it out of the park with these, with these uh, fans of yours, with these people that get to know you, with these people that want to be uh, maybe coached by you in the future on, on things. So let's hear some wisdom at the end. Uh, we'll end off the podcast. Okay. Okay. Um, so one of the best things I learned, um, and I'm just going to say it, even though, um, you know, it, it's a prayer, but I'm just going to say it. Okay. It's not, it's, it's religiously respectful. It's really just spiritual. And it goes like this. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, to the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That has been the most powerful, powerful prayer of my life. Third step prayer. <laughs> <laughs> because um, it puts things into perspective all the time, every time. And it is so true. It is so true when you actually break it down. Yeah. I want people to break that down and, and try it once in a while and, and see where see what it means to them for judging. Because people have a thing with judging. Mm -hmm. So what you just did there, you just used your passion to allow people inside to know you. So there it is, my friends. That's that's my biggest uh, advice that's helped me day in and out in the most, um, the, in the darkest moments of my life. How do people get a hold of you? So I'm like all over the social media. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my last name, uh, which is Fotuhi, it's a Persian last name. So it's F-O-T-O-O-H-I. Uh, I'm, I'm on Facebook. Is that the one that was on the passport or is it yours? And that's that's <laughs> mine. <laughs> no, the passport had a French name. <laughs> I don't even remember that name funny um so uh, della's voice um is on instagram on youtube uh, and della Futuhi is on facebook uh you can reach me you, if you message me on messenger um friend me uh, i'll friend you back and um we can keep in touch i'm uh, i'm loving doing della's voice so if you want to be on della's voice uh, send me a message uh, let me get to know you, see what message you want to put out there uh, and then be on the podcast and um, it gives you exposure. It allows you to put your, your light out there because that's what it's about. It's, it's to let you shine. So um, I hope you reach out to me and uh, thank you, Robert, for this opportunity. <laughs> it's kind of weird because she does the podcast herself. And, and like I said, it's, it's quite different to have uh, to be able to do this on my side, because me being the, the CEO of the company, um, I don't drive for perfection. I drive to excellence, right? I want excellence in everybody. I want to see everybody grow equally. So, I mean, when, when I'm watching you, Della, I mean, that's one of the biggest things that I see is I see you growing um, equally with us at the same time. So I don't look down at you. I look at your talents. And Kim Sue Berg said it best, all right? focus solution therapy. What that means is you look at the stuff you're doing well and you say, well, what can I do better next time? I've already achieved that goal. I've already done well, but what could I do to even make that even better next time? Forget the negative because it's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what we do. So it's been an honor for you to let me take your spot 
yeah. on the podcast. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's going to be an awful long time before I do it again. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind being the one that's being interviewed, but I, I'm okay with that. Thank I'm, you. Thank you for giving me your time and doing this. Uh, no problem. I think this is uh, this is actually fine. It's honor. Uh, a little bit of joyous time. It, it helps along the way. Put a smile on people's faces. Perfect. Um, I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later on. Talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. I, do you know how to end this, Robert? You're going to have to end it for me. I, I, I just ended the way I ended it. Cheers. <laughs> so, so, so this is the way I end it. This has been another Magnetic Entrepreneur Podcast. And my name is Della. I'm not going to say my name is Della. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, say your name. <laughs> okay. Her name is Della. She wants to thank you for being on the podcast that she does for me. Um, yeah. You know what? Wherever you guys watch, and there's always bloopers. We always have fun. We always enjoy ourselves. But we always get to the point. We always make sure that upbranding is always there. But if you can't have a little bit of fun while you're working at times, you should really look at what you're doing because it's like, don't take it too seriously. Don't be too serious. And don't let expectations get in the way because they're number one killer. You guys take care. And Della, thank you very much. Thank you. It's an honor to, uh, to be here and taking your seat. Hey, you <laughs> did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting fired. <laughs> you, can, you can fire me till the next time. I don't mind another year or two down the road. <laughs> no, you, did, you did good. Thank you, my friend. All right. Thank you very kindly. Take care. Bye. <laughs>